Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode, and I'm very excited to have with me Mr. Brian Garland, who is the CNC prototype shop manager at Magic Leap. So, welcome, Brian. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, where's Magic Leap located? We are located in Plantation, Florida. That's our headquarters. We do have uh, offices in Austin, Texas, one in Sunnyvale, California. There's a couple little satellite sa- sa- satellite sites, excuse me, in California as well. We have a, a R&D center in Switzerland. So we're we're pretty well all over the place. So yeah, for sure. really, really happy about that. That's great. Now in Florida, where is where is Plantation? At? What, what part of Florida is that? South Florida. We're okay. About three miles north of Fort Lauderdale. Oh wow! Okay, mm-hmm. beautiful weather. I guess year round, right? Year round, but right now it's pretty brutal. It's super humid. And hot, sure. so. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brian, we got connected. There was a listener that actually works at Magic Leak, and they connected us together. I'm very excited. That's yes. the first time that's actually happened where just a a true listener brought us together. But. Uh, yeah maybe help us get started tell us about the journey to where you're at right now because that really helps us on these hero conversations just learn a little bit about you sure sure i grew up in western pennsylvania in in the appalachian mountains a lot of coal mining steel mill towns back in the day my dad had a shop in a little town it's called robinson it's just it was just a little coal mining town and we did machining fabrication and heavy equipment repair we did a lot of work for mining companies dad always had me and my brother do something in the shop whether it was an hour or whether it was all day whether it was sweep the floor or or do something productive with with whatever projects were going on so we we started working at an early age right out of school i went worked in a steel mill one of the last running steel mills and i call it a steel mill technically we didn't roll any steel there but we had foundries and big big machine shops and started in there when i was 17 one of the one of the few people that actually started in there that young in the, what they called lower shop that's where we did all the finishing work of rolling mill rolls castings different things like that um, I was there for about four years and I moved on to a manufacturing company that was closer to home, worked there till they shut down. And I went from that company to a medical research and development company. That was very interesting job. We can talk a little bit about that um, as we go, but we made a lot of cool things, uh, heart valves, pacemakers. We made a non-invasive glucose sensor, it checked your blood glucose without actually having to put a hole in you and draw blood. That was very interesting. Cancer treatment machines. So we, we were exposed to a lot of different parts of the medical field. Um, from there, I had my own shop for a while. That was, that was interesting. Um, we did a lot of work for DOD and some other folks. Uh, work went from there to a company that made building machines for anybody who would who would buy them some of our customers were the military but also some folks overseas they they wanted to buy these building machines and it was it was an interesting interesting setup so you could take these machines and roll them out on a job site and build a building from scratch uh very very neat very neat so we can talk a little bit more about that too it's 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 a complicated process but um so around the crash there was really no work i was out of work for about a year and um i took care of my dad for for that year he was he's disabled so i got to see him every day that was that was that was awesome i mean downside was there's no work but at least we got to spend that time together right and after that i went on to uh colorado i spent five years in colorado working running a machine shop out there doing the programming some some little bit of engineering for them but it, well, that was that was that was a big move there halfway across the country um most of the time folks where i grew up you 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 spent your whole life there in that area so that was it was kind of unusual and and uh, big move, big step. And then from Colorado, made it down here in Florida. I've been here for about six years. Okay. Same, same company from Colorado, just now in Florida? Nope. Nope. Totally okay. different company. So, but it was, it was interesting. Uh, what was, what's, was neat about the different moves is 
if you pay attention, you can pick up a lot of different ways of doing things, learn from people that are there. Or for me, I like helping people. Um, in Colorado, this, this fellow I work with, he was awesome, salty earth type of guy. And one of our big things was you bring something into the shop and I'd say, well, you know, we got to do this. And he'd say, there, it'll never work. And that got to be the gag, right? Because every time something come in, we both look at and look at each other and say, it'll never work. And right. just, oh, he was, he was awesome. I, I miss him terribly. I just, he was a lot of fun. And, uh, but he spent 33 years working in oil field maintenance and repair and just, just an encyclopedia of knowledge about oil field uh, mechanics, pump jacks, things like that. It was yeah. quite an experience. So. Yeah. I do miss him. He was, he was something. I mean, that's, that's an impressive journey. I mean, I, I was writing notes to keep up, you know, starting at this, from the steel mill at 17 yeah. yes. to, to yes. manufacturing facilities, to medical research just jumped yeah. out. Like that was, wow. You've been a shop owner. So you, you've yep. experienced oh, that, yes. that pain and agony. I'm, I'm surprised you, you don't have more gray hair than you do. You must, you know, oh, you hide it, it well. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And, yeah. and now building machines and now you to the shop manager or something, you, mm -hmm. you've really been all over the board, haven't you? Yes. Yes. And, and, and you know, the funny thing about that, uh, I mean, I grew up in, in the early eighties, late seventies, early eighties. And back in the day, job hopping was considered a really bad trait. Unfortunately, with the way the, the trade manufacturing is going in this country, you almost have to job hop whenever you reach a certain, you know, a certain pay range. If you have a family, cause I, 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 we started our family when we were 20 and you know, you have, you have kids to take care of. So you have a certain pay range you need to be. So you just went to the job that you, to keep your uh, level of living the same. I mean, yeah. I mean, just, you, you know, how it is, if you have kids, you, you have kids to take care of and, um, they're not back cheap, in, are they? they are not cheap and they get keep they keep getting more expensive all the time and i i don't know just but but it's just that job hopping trade or the job hopping i don't i don't know what you want to call it there were, there was a specific term for that but that was something that most employers would shy away from you know right. it's like oh this this guy's not going to be committed but no things have certainly changed they uh, have they have. You know. I mean, from, from your standpoint, you have seen so many different industries. What, what are you seeing as some of the challenges out there, Brian, what, what's, what's jumps to the, to the forefront for you? Well, the, the big challenge is getting young folks interested in learning the trade. Yeah. Um, most folks, when they come in, if, especially if you bring them in for a tour or a shop, they're just super excited to see all this automated machinery and everything. All right. Okay. That's great. Um, but to find an interest young folks and in starting out on the manual side to learning some of the basics and then moving on to the CNC machines, that, that's the tough part. That's the tough sell. I think there is still a perception that it's a dirty trade, right? right. You're going to go in there and you're just going to be all filthy all day. And, and, and that does happen in, in different trades, right? Uh, different parts of trade. When I was in Colorado and we worked on a lot of oil field things and, and different other things. Yeah, we got, we got dirty. I mean, no, no doubt about it. You're, you're cutting, cutting heavy material, whatnot, even in the steel mill, you got dirty. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just, but you're, you're paid fairly well for that. So, I mean, it's, it's one of these things. But uh, it's hard to interest folks. I mean, with with the way the media is today, and a lot, uh, you know, all all these other influences. I mean, it, it's it's tough to get the kids interested. And for me, I'm in I'm in the fifty plus range. I'm not going to be able to do this my whole life. I mean, it's somebody's going to have to, you know, backfill and take over. It's hard. It's hard to get kids interested so. it, it is and we've we've heard that too brian from oh, sure. so many guests on just you know workforce attrition and that skills gap mm -hmm. and and trying to get the right people in those roles now you you piqued my interest when you said when you have them come to the shop for a tour yes. their interest goes up so how, how does that work how do you find is there are there groups that are coming or are you guys like opening like just an open shop day to hey to try to get people to come in i'm curious on how that's working well, unfortunately, we're, you know, Magic Leap, we, we, we can't really let anybody in. We have a lot of, a lot of sensitive IP that you just, you know, mm -hmm. you just can't do that. 
And, and that's tough because a lot of the really interesting high-tech equipment are in places like this. And it's hard to let people come through. Right. Um, if you do DOD work, things like that, you don't, you want people seeing what you're working on. I mean, that, that's the tough part. So uh, the next thing that I see, especially for us, when things kind of, you know, get a little, little bit more on an even keel, mm -hmm. I'd like to have people from the community college come over or whatnot. And mm -hmm. if they're interested in engineering or coming through uh, other parts of machining, you know, if they're interested in machining, have them come in and just take a look. But mm -hmm. um, it's hard. It, it really is. Um, and now with, with the pandemic and all these other things going on, it's, it just makes it 10 times more difficult. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're trying, we're really trying, you, you brought up that, that stigma that it's dirty work, it's hard oh, work. Right. It's, it, you know, we, we've heard what is it, dull, dull, dirty, you know, type, <laughs> type of stigma that around, you know, just, and it's, there, it's yes. just wrong. So yep. I guess having these conversations is one way to break that down. Right. And, and to, to bring awareness sure. that, that it's really not that way. It's a lot of fulfillment in this type of work. Yeah. And the thing too, is one of, one of, since you brought that up, what I've noticed over the years Back in the day when I started in, in the steel mill or this place I worked at, uh, they, there was no air quality control. There was no, mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't turn any of the heat on until February. Right. I mean, if you're like, it had to really be cold. Um, but that's not to say there was snow inside the building. You had equipment and stuff that made a little bit of heat, but it, it, was, it was some rough go there for, for a few months. But now most, most facilities are very modern right mm -hmm. they're they're climate controlled especially if you're doing work that is very high precision you you know from beginning to end right climate control is part of that right so um so things have changed a lot in the industry as far as that goes depending on the type of work you're in i remember when i was at the medical place in the 90s one of the things we started getting involved in was miscontrol in in the shop yeah right because back in the day, I mean, you'd look down in days where we had equipment, you'd see, you know, there's this steam smoke, coolant smoke rising off. Me. Nobody cared. I mean, that's just the way it was. But that's that's just not how it is anymore. Everything's contained. All the machinery, um, unless this is really, really big, everything's covered. Yeah. You got safety, safety guarding, all that stuff. I mean, so it's all for, it's all moving in a positive direction for the better. Um, with concern for people's health and well-being, operators' well-being. So that's so important. And let's let's imagine that we're at a uh, at a career fair at that community college there in Florida. Yes. We're at the maybe you're at the front of the room, or it's a sidebar conversation with a group of people who are interested to learn about uh, you know CNC prototype you know type of work that you do. What advice would you give them? What would you tell them? I would say, if you like this sort of thing do a little more research on it, make sure, you know, make sure there's a lot of different offshoots to what we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's medical, there's defense, there's, there's just a ton of different things you can do nowadays. Uh, look at the newer technologies they have. And I, I don't know, I, I've, I've been pretty forward over, over my career, just for example, going from steel mills and things like that to a medical device research and development place. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to go out and ask somebody. Say, hey, what do you do? Can I come see? Or, I mean, for me, if somebody came to the front door, hey, can I see your shop or whatever? I'm, you'd have to make arrangements, but I'd be, I'd be flattered. It's like, yeah. yeah, come see. I mean, I'll show you what we do. You know, you might be interested. Um, and and even if it doesn't necessarily interest you in, say, machining or what we do, maybe it'll interest you in engineering or something. Exactly. And, I mean. We had a, we have a fellow here, he's he's in the sixty range, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was having a conversation with with one of my one of my superiors, and we're trying to move him into more of a design role and not necessarily be standing in front of machine programming, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And he is very very good at the um, master cam. We have some other. So we have SolidWorks, Creo, very good at that. And this fellow said, well, what are you going to do if he gets so good that, you know, we need him upstairs to do this? I said, absolutely. You know, that's the thing. Right. 
and get those skills up. And if he really desires to do that, move them on. I says, I'll find somebody else. I mean, it'll be hard, but I'll find somebody else. And he says, well, that's, that's a good answer, but, but that's the key. You know, you have your people yeah. train them, train them, let them go as far as they will go. That's uh, right. This medical device place I worked at same thing. Um, if you wanted to learn any type of software, that's where I learned pro engineering. They had this pro engineer platform back in the nineties. And I asked, the, I asked the one engineer, I said, what's that? And he was showing me and he says, are you interested? Said, Absolutely. He said, well, here, there you go. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. This is, this is wonderful. And that's, that's how I learned. They, they said, whatever you want to learn, whatever you, you know, that's where I learned auto, my AutoCAD, my master, all that stuff, whatever you wanted to learn. And that's, that's how you develop your people. If they're interested, you feed that interest and you never know where it'll go. You I don't, mean, you know, and I tell you, just listen to you, just that one moment, think about what that did for your career, right? And, it, and, and totally different at. direction. Yep. I, I love the advice to the people out there listening. Yeah. Ask the questions. I mean, really, yeah. ask, and just, just walk up to somebody and, and there's, People love to talk about, just like you right now, Brian, oh, man. the passion you have in what you do. You know, as, a, yes. as I used to run a machine shop here at Eco, and mm -hmm. I know we did manual machining. And the best way we would, would teach people was just that side-by-side -side mentorship, right? And just, just, right. just right. watching that lathe turn and making those cuts and seeing what that does. So oh, yes. how does that work? Uh, in your CNC world from a mentorship standpoint, are there programs where, like do you, do you couple the new people with the, with that experience to, to really learn that way hands on? I mean, how, how does that work? Well, unfortunately we haven't had a lot of opportunity here to do that. I, I we are, we are always short staffed. It seems like, cause you know, there's just so much going on, Right. but if I had the opportunity to do that, I would bring somebody in, and just and start them. We have a a Kent mill. It's very similar to a Bridgeport, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a mill power control on it, so you can run manual or you can run CNC. That's generally where I'll start somebody. See how you know how familiar they are with things, and if they're comfortable doing the type of work we're doing, and then just ask them, "Hey, you interested in this uh, this Mazak lathe we have back here? This mill? What, what do you think? You think you could?" handle that you want to learn a little bit about that and if they're interested i'll i'll train them That's I, so I just cool. i have i have no problem um i mean like i say i love sharing what i do and i'm not going to be able to do this forever i'll do as long as i can right as long as my body will handle it i'll do it but you know you got to be real you start getting in the 50 60 65 range and i mean i've been doing this all my life yeah and yeah. you know uh concrete's concrete's hard on the feet and stuff so you gotta you know, For sure. there's there there's gonna be an end point someday <laughs> now when you so, when you look back over those mentors that have helped you does anybody stand oh out my. brian wow there's so many because i mean i always say i don't know everything about everything and i've been uh, i mean super fortunate to have have, have worked with a bunch of great people from um, well, I had a fellow I worked with in a steel mill. It's, it's kind of funny if we have the time to tell you a little story about sure. this. Um, I started in, in the steel mill when I was 17. I mean, I was scared to death. I got in there and they had, we had bridge cranes that are radio controlled and they, they'd go right over top of you carrying whatever. Now, they wouldn't carry a load of stuff over you. to would be out on the side of the bay. But, man, it was scary because, I mean, it's shaking and carrying. Oh, oh man, what I get myself into here, right? And I was, I was like I said, I was pretty scared. I, I thought, man, this is a mistake. So I ended up, uh, my boss took me over and was talking to this guy. His name is Tom Smith. I think he's passed on now. But uh, we hit it off start talking with each other he says let's go over to this this small engine lathe we have and we'll see what you can do okay so yeah. i go over to this monarch lathe it's who it is a 28 inch swing by 20 feet long i'm i said this is this is the smallest lathe you have here he goes oh yeah 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 <laughs> he says you do good here we'll put you on the bigger laces so that's the small thinking, one huh? <laughs> yeah oh yeah i'm thinking man this is getting worse as it goes yeah you know? and uh so he laid this little job out. I was making boring bars for the planer mills and it was, it was easy. So 
I said, oh, okay. And uh, he said, well, we'll give you two weeks of training and we'll see how it goes. I said, okay. So, I mean, at home, we did stuff at home and everything. And, and in, uh, in my tech school, we did a lot of stuff. I mean, it wasn't a, that big of a job. So I had it done in like four and a half hours. He comes back over. He goes, you're done already. I said, yeah. I said, what else you got? He goes, hold on. So he went and got the boss, uh, Dave Golden. I think he's, he's passed on now too. Um, but they were talking and I thought, oh man, I'm dead. You know, they're over there chattering away and Dave comes up on a platform and goes, oh, he says, that's, that's pretty good. You know, and it, it was simple turning. I mean, yeah, easy for a first year student. Right. And he says, you're going to, he said, are you going to stay? I mean, he looked right at me. He said, are you going to stay? If we, you know, we get you on, are you going to stay? I said, yeah, I'm going to stay. And uh, lied through my teeth because I thought, oh man, I ain't never going to make it. But anyway, I'm going to do it, you know? And uh, he says, good. He says, I got a lot of work for you. And uh, pretty soon these guys with forklifts and this is no kid. And they started bringing pallets of stuff over to do. I mean, pallets of from burnout rings to, you know, make glands out of castings, uh, raw breast. Uh, I mean, it was crazy. Must have put 30 pallets of stuff there in front of that lathe, right? Wow. And he says, there you go. He says, you can work all over time you want. You're a young man. You can do <laughs> Like, oh, man, what I get myself into? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but it was, it was, it was good. I mean, I got to do a lot of different things. And um, there was an older fellow that worked uh, in a, on an old American CNC. I mean, this thing was old. And uh, we all hit it off good. And, and that's one of the things that... I think it served me well. I, I, I enjoyed listening to the folks that have been in trade for a while because the more you listen, you learn from these guys and you don't have to do it the hard way or you don't have to, you know, maybe, you know, bust your back so much to get the same amount of jobs done or work done or whatever, however you want to say it, you know? Right, and right. Um, so they, they were a great crew, but Tom Smith and them, they were great. Um, my instructor too, I can't say enough about him whenever we were going to school. He was, um, uh, Man, he was something else. Um, left left for Terry Despotakis. He was he was an Army Ranger, and uh, this guy whew, tough as nails. But he was just just incredible, just amazing. That's great. That's great. Now, Brian, it sounds like you had so many wonderful people that were helping you throughout your career. Last oh, question my. on the career part. When that I really I'm just curious because you you've done so many different things. Mm -hmm. Which one of these roles and jobs were you the happiest? I would say, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, the medical device place in the 90s. Okay. Um, because I started there. It was funny. I, I, I was, they called me back to the mill. I was there for a few months. And, and unfortunately, they went bankrupt. But I was running an 86-inch Bullard very cool boring mill okay wow so i went to this medical device place and uh it, it was interesting because there was a couple kids i went to school with worked there didn't know they worked there uh one kid worked in the shop the other folks worked up front and uh we're all talking hey how you doing blah 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 you know, i brought my toolbox in and everything and um after we got familiarized with everything they gave me this little lexian box about this big with 250 of these connector pins for a functional electrical stimulator. And they're made of high hypodermic needle tubing, right? Mm -hmm. Super small. And here you needed to bear these under a microscope. And I'm like, yeah, right. This is a gag. Come on, really? What do you want me to do? And, and they all looked at me as serious as could be. No, that's, that's your job. You need to, need to deburr them <laughs> under a microscope. You gotta be kidding me. And uh, I mean, go from 86 inch Bullard to this. And again, I'm like, Boy, I made a mistake. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this, you know. But uh, you know, after about a week of the burn like that, and they said, "Well, you survived that, so you know, you'll, you'll do okay here." But what was what was nice about that, you know, they always had the the learning thing, right? You, right. You, if you wanted to learn more, you could do. And after about a year there, they 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 knew I could do the CNC portion of of things and. My boss at the time asked me, say, hey, uh, if we, we want to sub CNC department. Are you interested? I said, absolutely. I'll do it. And uh, they said, here, here, spec out these machines, whatever you want. And we'll put a proposal together and 
the rest is history. We got two Mazaks and started making all kind of neat stuff. That's so, very cool. That is yeah. such a cool story, Brian. But that's the best job. I mean, this is a real, don't get me wrong, I love Magic Leap. Right. Uh, great job. But that was by far one of the best jobs I've ever had. Um, the owner of the company, he was an engineer. Yeah. Super nice. I mean, he'd come down to the shop. He'd spend time down the shop just there and talk. You know, how you doing? You know, how's the family? And he knew all our kids' names and every. I mean, this guy, he had a very, he had an interest in everybody who worked at the company. And at the time we had a hundred, probably 110 people. And he knew everything about everybody. Wow. That speaks to the, to the character and the culture of that company. There you go. For there sure. you go. Now let's take a, let's take a turn down a dirt road here and let's, let's sure. talk, talk about Brian outside of work. So <laughs> curious, Brian, what do you enjoy doing for fun? What do I enjoy doing for fun? Well, I'll tell you what this, I enjoy doing this for fun. This is, this is like a vacation every day other than, deadlines and things like that i enjoy making things at home you know we're always working on something at the house and right. you know we're, we're all constantly doing things with that cars i have i have an old sob nine five you know so there's always something broke on it so i'm always working on it but uh it's a snappy little car though right right <laughs> yeah yeah so we do we do a lot of work with that and my son is down here with us now he's going to go to aviation school so uh, try to do stuff with him as much as I can. You know, it's, it's tough down here. There's for the kids, it's, it's not a whole lot to do unless they're in school or something like that or working, right. but, um, used to enjoy going hunting and fishing and stuff. But again, down here, it's hard to do. You have to really make an effort to right. head North or whatever. And, but, um, but yeah, I mean, like they always say, do what you love for your job and you know, it won't be like a job. And that's what I do. I love making stuff. So very cool. Very yeah. cool. Now you've mentioned yeah. your son, you mentioned, I think earlier yes. you, that, that you guys started your family at, when you were 20. So what, 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 yep. what can you share with us about your family? Oh my, um, my oldest daughter, she's 31 and, uh, she, you know, I have a grandson. He's going to be five. They're they're up in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. I don't get to see them too much. That's kind of a bummer. But she, uh, man, she was something else growing up. She she uh, unfortunately bore the brunt of our inexperienced as parents. I mean, it's just. But uh, yeah, she she is something else. Um, my middle daughter uh, was my stepdaughter. She she's awesome. She's the one. My me and my my wife. She she's the one who's going to pick our personal care home you know <laughs> she's she's going to take care of us i guess this week she she was joking i think when she said that <laughs> so and then my youngest like say we're trying to get him started in aviation school and stuff he likes to work on things and cars and whatnot so he wants to go and get his airframe power plant okay. certification and and do that so but uh but yeah so we we keep keep things rolling and you know my wife, you know, she, she's my hero. She's had a rough go. And I mean, she just keeps, she keeps, keeps things together and going every day. And, but she is amazing. So that's all awesome. gotta say that. So now is most of your family in Pennsylvania still. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's, and that's tough. I mean, that's, that's the downside with the, the way we all live our life today. Cause most people, I mean, you got to move where the work's at. Right you know, whatever career path you choose. And that's tough. And, uh, but, uh, one of the nice things uh, my aunt, she recently passed away. She came down to visit us a couple of times. That was nice. I yes. mean, she, she was, she was something else, but, um, you know, it, it makes it tough, but you know, you can get on an airplane, and go back home. Right. A couple of hours you're there. So well, just got to make the effort to do it <laughs> for sure. I mean, it, but it sounds like you have a wonderful family and thank you for I sharing. Do. We, we love hearing about the family. Me, I, I just enjoy that. I think cause it's so much, <laughs> we get so caught up in the work and we forget, you know, sometimes while we're at work. Yes. Right. So, yes. Oh uh, yes. Really appreciate yes. that. And I'm curious, yeah. any, any uh, things that you enjoy uh, consuming for fun, like podcasts or books, things like that, that you, that you find value in. Well, I, I'll tell you what, um, uh, as far as podcasts, I'm new to the podcast stuff. I do follow a couple of folks on, on YouTube. They, um, one fellow over in Oregon, he, he works on heavy equipment and stuff. And believe it or not, whenever I was working a steel mill, 
I mean, my first wife, she, she always stayed home with the kids. I worked two jobs because I mean, it was rough, it was rough going there for a while. So, and I had kind of a little, I don't know if you could call it a business, but I did a lot of side work for a friend of mine, worked on heavy equipment, did some things. So it's nice. I can relate to this fellow, the struggles of trying to keep people running, keep Mm -hmm. things going. It's kind of like the machining portion of it too. You're, you're making stuff to keep people going. So that's interesting. And then there's a fellow over in Idaho. I like watching him. He has old old Caterpillar equipment. Uh, My uncle had a, had a bunch of old equipment too. And, you know, it just takes you back. Right. Yeah. When you're growing up and some of the fun things you used to do. And, um, but uh, I can tell you a little story about that. If you want, if you got, if we got time. Sure. uh, About heavy equipment. So whenever, I was probably 12. My uncle, he had the, these old Warner, Warner and Swayze great alls, and they put these units on the back of like a tandem drive truck. Okay. So he had a couple of them and he wanted to take the top of one, the great all part of it, they had the bucket and all the implements and put it on this crane carrier chassis. It was all real, all wheel drive. So he could get around these different places and do work. And so dad says, well, this is what we're going to do. You know, this, we're going to, and you didn't argue with dad. That's just, okay, we're going to do it. So we ended up going and taking the crane back off of this crane carry chassis. And then we we're getting ready to swap the old international chassis out from under the grade all. And my job was to line up this crane carry chassis and back it underneath the grade all part of it. Well, that seems simple enough, but the problem with that grade all, you have the boom on the one side and you have the counterweight on the back side. So we built a blocking system and pulled the backside up and my uncle would push the boom down and he picked the, the implement part off of the tandem truck. No problem. Well, the problem is crane carry chassis is about an inch and a quarter or two inches higher than the other one, mm. other chassis. So my uncle, he uh, put the boom down. And my dad pulled the other truck out. So I started back in this crane carrier chassis in and wouldn't fit and i hit it so my uncle started hollering at me and i don't like that i just i just don't i mean I'm, i i don't care i'll take direction but i don't like the holler and stuff right so and i had i was pretty bad tempered when i was growing up so i pulled forward as far as you know, probably about 30 feet and uh this crane carrier had a reverse one and a reverse two well i found reverse two and i'm telling you what I flogged that thing in reverse and my uncle's eyes got as big as dinner plates and I was coming for him. And I mean, boom, right underneath there. And it just, I mean, he was scared to death. He's holding on, you know, like, boom, right under my dad. He couldn't believe it. He's getting out of the truck and he's holding on to the door like, oh my God, what's this kid doing? You know, and it's too late. It was over. Right. And it backed under and it stopped. And, uh, and I was still, I was still pretty stoked. I was pretty upset. But my uncle's just, he's still sitting in there, you know, and I started walking over to my dad. Cause I was, I was still pretty, pretty fired up. And my uncle, he get, he's shaking. He's getting down out of the grade all and he's lighting up a cigarette. <laughs> oh my gosh. And my dad, he starts laughing. You know, he said, I do. He, he said, I knew it was a mistake when he started hollering at you. Like, don't do it. And he said, but it was too late. It was over. My uncle was like, Oh Yeah. It looks pretty good. I think we'll just leave it right there, you know. And that was, oh yeah. My dad's. Uh, I think it's time to go home. <laughs> so, oh you know, yeah. So he was, yeah. It was, like I say, I got a lot of stories about that. I mean, we did some crazy stuff growing up. That's cool, man. Brian. Oh, man. oh. But, well, we're, uh, yeah, we're getting something. we're getting here to the end, Brian. And I want to. Sure. I love to do two things quickly, if yes, we can. Yes. Let's lightning yes. round. We won't pound yes. through this because I'd like for our listeners to know a little bit about you outside of, outside sure. of work to, on some random stuff. So let's play that real quick, and then we'll jump to your yeah. why. Is that cool? Sounds good. All right. So yep. what's your favorite food? Pasta. All what right. Kind of pasta. Adult beverage. Um, boy, oh, boy. That's a tough one. Adult beverage, I would say JD. All right. What's yep. your favorite app on your phone? Favorite app on my phone right now? is oh geez that's hard to say i guess i guess i'd have to say youtube or facebook i use those the most okay what's the guilty pleasure you have uh anything chocolate all right i'm with you there my man how about favorite (laughs) music 
old uh, 80s okay uh country western you know back in that time and opera i love opera but nobody ah, else likes it so, opera, that's so our... I, I'm, I'm a secret opera listener that you are our first opera answer to that yes. how about all-time yes. favorite uh, movie apollo 13 oh cool cool and yes. then last one dogs or cats dogs all right you got dogs, it right yes. right yes. so th the the very last question of the show brian it's been <laughs> wonderful having you on is yes is yes, about sir. your why and yes I, and and it speaks to your passion what's your passion about so somebody wants to know brian what your personal why is what would that be personal why why do i do this because i love doing it i love making things and i love solving problems and that in turn translates into helping people love helping people so it's a big thing well brian this has been a, a, an absolute pleasure for us and Thank for you. our listeners you what a journey uh, you know, <laughs> for the listeners out there that want to connect with Brian, we'll put in, in our show notes a link mm -hmm. to uh, his LinkedIn profile as well as a link yes. to uh, the company he's at right now. And you can connect with them and check them out yes. if you want to get that tour and see some of the stuff that they got going on and interested in Absolutely. machining. Uh, he's yep. your guy. So, Brian, this has been a, a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time with this on Eco Ask Why. You're, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. And if you ever want to hear some more boring stories about crazy stuff we did, uh, just ring me up. <laughs> well, you just let us know when you start that podcast and we'll, ju we'll jump we'll right on that and help you guys out. Sounds good. Thank you very right. much. Thank you, Brian. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.